Hi, today I'm joined with Luis Zalafar Hurado. And today's topic is how to rank better for AI query fan out queries. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks, uh, James, for having me. Let's jump on it. So let's jump straight into it. How do you rank better for AI query fan out? Firstly, you have to define the entity you want to rank for. Uh, let's define entity. An entity could be an organization, a person, a thing, uh, anything on the internet. And then you have to find the right attributes for that uh, entity because the game just ranking for keywords is it no longer works that well. Uh, uh, Google rank entities. And then you have to structure the content in order to answer the question related to that entity. So let's use the example James Dooley. Let's say you want to ask Google a question about James Dooley and Google is going to give you the answer. You can request James Dooley H and then Google is going to gather all the information they have across the internet and going to give you the answer. But the answer could be a snippet, it could be in AI overview. It depends on how the user triggered the query. It, it depends on the interface the user use. It could be voice search, it could be text, it could be AI mode, it could be anything. And then Google is going to get, again, all that information and the one which is easily a structure to answer the question, what is James Dooley's age, is going to uh, come up on top probably. So how to run better for uh, query fan out in AI is very simple. You trigger a bunch of questions or queries on Google, and then you analyze the SERPs, analyze how the data is structured, and which content serve that answer. And all you have to do is to come up with a better structure, better organization, to cover more attributes about the entity, and to answer more, more questions about that entity than your competitors. That could be a summary of how you can do it. So with regards to query fan out, is there a way of knowing, um, if I was to search, for me, when I started looking into it further, let's say I was to say, um, is let's say one of my businesses called Fat Rank, right? Mm -hmm. So is Fat Rank legitimate, right? Or is Fat Rank a good company, right? What I started to realize was the query found out terms was like Fat Rank reviews, Fat Rank testimonials, and it was all different attributes or all different ways of trying to expand upon how do you determine whether they are a safe company to work for, whether they're legitimate. Like, is there a way of knowing what attributes you need to cover? You, talk, you spoke about, that about the entity and trying to cover all the different attributes. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you go and find out? Or is it just literally by stuff in, the, in your head? Or do you ask, do you prompt AI? Do you look at the people also ask the related searches? The auto suggest, like, how do you find all the different fan out queries to be able to fully try to answer that question? Okay. First of all, let's define the entity fat rank. Yep. And then the first thing I do is to analyze the search, which is you trigger the query fat rank on Google and you analyze as much interfaces as possible. Let's say first Google, second AI mode, and then you trigger ChatGPT, Brexit AI or any AI interface you want about that entity. And you look at the SERPs and you look at the information Google uh, extract. The first things I would do is to look at the uh, data on top. And then the second one would be the related searches about, in this case, the entity fat rank. Once I have that data, you create a kind of uh, procedure in order to keep ser searching and keep expanding about those related terms. And with each related term you search, you're going to get more data. 
and do you start, uh, let's say, kind of a game, which is chasing the rabbit hole in order to come up with the solution of that problem. It's like solving a puzzle. And at each step, you're going to get more data, which are going to open new avenues of information and new research. Uh, you gather all the data, and when you have a kind of general idea, to create a, a strategy of a war plan or whatever you want to call it. And you analyze either with a screenshot <coughs> or with SEO tools or whatever you want. And then you define the entity, which is fast rank, fat rank, and then you the attributes, fat rank reviews, fat rank testimonial, fat rank is legit. And you get all those queries related to the entity. And once you define that, you, you said, and you think about how can I expand, how can I augment the queries related to that entity, which in this case is a brand, frat brand. And in that process is how you can first get the ideas and then introduce uh, or implement SEO optimization in order to keep growing and growing the terms. That's what I would do it. Well, so I'm going to throw a curveball in here. Let's say you've got a brand new brand. I know you mm -hmm. generally work with an existing brand that's got search volume. Um, you're a big believer that branded clicks and that building that trust is very important for Google to augment, kind of um, widen like the search and stuff like that and build that trust. But specifically for LLMs, you've got a new brand now and you want to try and make certain that you're ranking for all possible... Um, query find out terms. So you can't be going searching fat rank because there's nothing there yet. Let's say they're called Harado Dooley Semantics. Right? It's a brand new company that we're setting up between us that does semantic SEO and people want to know whether we're $20,000 a month so we're expensive but people want to know why they should use us. At what point then, how do you then try to think of the fan out queries that could be happening when there's no there's no Google for you to search and see what's going on with that entity. Okay. Let's assume that Google has no data, but the, the new brand is going to be launch. And then we have to find the, the branch, which is Hurado Dooley Semantics. And let's split the, the brand in semantic terms, which is three words. And then we have to analyze on Google if Google have previous data about these three terms, the term semantics is easy. Dooley is a surname, but it could be attributed to something else. And Jurado is a, another surname, but it could be attributed to a, a different meaning. Because Jurado is, uh, let's say, in Spanish language, Dooley is in English language, and semantics is, uh, let's say, agnostic. It could be in any language because in Spanish is semantica, which is query related. So now you launch a new brand and then you have to provide accurate information about these three terms and all the information that you provide in the website is going to feed the bot and is going to create a relationship between these three terms and all the content around that brand. So when you launch a new branch, you want your customers or your potential customer to search in a certain way about your product or services. And then you have to, again, instruct the content related to the product or services. So when a bot comes to your site, crawl the site and get all that information, it's going to create a relationships between the brand name and all the semantic terms and the meanings related to that brand. So that way you create a connection and when the user type on Google, a semantic search engine can only group three things, queries, users, and documents. Queries is what the user type on Google. Users is the real human searching on Google. And the document, it could be any piece of the information on the internet, a document, an image, a video, a podcast, whatever. And you create a connection. But the connection is gonna be triggered at the moment that Google realize, hey, there is a real human searching for a query 
and I have no information about this brand. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna trigger a bot. I'm gonna visit that brand, that site. I'm gonna crawl it. I'm gonna extra all the data, and I'm gonna generate a map of information between the brand, what the user search, and the document. Yeah, I mean, that's I, lo I love that terminology with regards to the user and the documents and stuff like that and the queries. The um, With regards to that then, obviously, if you was to go and just do the articles and the documents on your own website, right, how important is it to corroborate that on third-party sources to try to kind of confirm you saying this is who I am, this is what I do, and this is why I'm great, but that's you saying it. How important is the third party sources repeating that same message for who you are and what you do to try to get better rankings on query fan out in the LLMs? This is a very important thing. Uh, in order, if you do not, if you don't have external sources validation, you are a kind of isolated entity in the universe. You are a kind of isolated thing that nobody knows about, nobody talks about, how important can you be if nobody mentioned you, talk about you, create a link to your site, or anybody have ever heard of you. So third party validations is, let's say, the glue that is going to put all the pieces together, because if you're not popular, if nobody knows you, if nobody talks about you, if nobody search for your brand, if you have no backlinks, how important are you going to be in Google sites? If you are an isolated things in the universe, which is not connected to anything. So, uh, as you mentioned, third party uh, validation sources like social media, reviews, press releases, citations, and so on and so forth are really important, but only as a consolidation and corroboration signals when everything is uh, let's say, a strategically plan and design from a brand perspective. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I started to do the external third party, I used to be obsessed with backlinks. And now I've kind of changed the terminology internally from backlinks to corroboration. Um, it's just making certain that my guest posts and my press releases used to be there literally just for the link and the page rank distribution, where now... I'm semantically trying to expand upon my topical map externally on third party sources and I'd never done that previously. And now I'm realizing that that is what's, I wouldn't say manipulating, it's just feeding the LLMs and it's feeding the algorithms. And I never really, I was always getting cheap guest post content just for the, the link juice and not really thinking actually that could have like reconfirmed who I am and, and what I do. Is there anything, if anyone's looking um, for more information with regards to um, query fan out, or obviously we've spoken on a previous video about query augmentation um, and query networks within Google. If someone wants to know more about this information, is there any way they can follow you or contact you? Obviously, you can mention about the newsletter that you have. Um, like, Where can people find out more about ranking query fan out or other related terms to rankings? within the LLMs. Yes, they can find me in seotechnico.com as, as they can see in the screenshot, in the screen. Or they can search for my name, they can find uh, everything I shared on LinkedIn. And if they're interested in Semantic SEO, they can subscribe to dailysemanticseo.com. Every single day I write an email about Semantic SEO. Check it out. So I hope you like this video. We've been with regards to how to rank for query fan out different terms. It's very important. It's been here for a long time with regards to query augmentation and query networks. If you want to know more about query augmentation, check out the link in the description. Um, we did another video on this covering all the different topics of the difference between query fan out and query augmentation. It's been a pleasure having you, Louise. Bye.